Okay, so um, there's some ironic pieces in this presentation. The first of which is the fact that I got this submitted late to Pam, which I turned into one of the students that I despised in my class. And the second piece of irony is actually going to show up a little bit later in the presentation. But a little bit about myself. I'm an assistant professor in kinesiology and health promotion. I have a specialty in sport and exercise psychology and in counseling psychology. And I also work part-time in UK athletics. And so um, I have a pretty cool job. And um, the point of, of me here today is to really, again, walk you through the journey that I've had through the, the Eli program, but, but more specifically talking about my experience with my colleagues in the FLC, which I felt I was very fortunate to have. And fortunately, it was just described because I was part of the FLC that created the community uh, shell. And so the, the, the main focus for me and my objective in learning uh, throughout this year was to how to develop community online. And so I want to provide a specific example as to how I use that for my course. And so to set the stage just a little bit, I teach a class that's KHP 300, which is psychology and sociology of sport. And so really it's two classes that could easily stand alone and be a 16 week course throughout the semester that's jammed into one semester. So we're, we're left with a little bit of space here for a little room for error. And then recently we added the graduate composition and communication requirement which really kind of jumbled things up because whatever time that we had as kind of wiggle room just vanished because we have to provide them an opportunity to give a 15 minute presentation or 10 minutes or something like I should obviously know this but um, so then I was presented with the challenge of how do I manage all this time and still have this piece of, of community engagement within uh, the course if it's an online course and, and my own philosophy is looking at student success and a really big piece of this and obviously there's more to it than this but engagement I think is very very important um, my experience as a, as a sports psychologist tells me that, that cohesion is a really big part and oftentimes we hope to get something like this uh, in, in a class. We're left with something that looks like this which is just people behind the screen uh, chatting and basically just agreeing with each other and not really challenging their ideas and so me thinking about now, is community really important? And this, I guess, falls down to your own personal teaching philosophies, whether you think that it's worthwhile to engage your students. Some classes don't really require this. Sometimes it's just hard facts and you lecture and you give this information. For me, as a psychology and social science scientist, yeah, that's my freebie slide. Um, <laughs> I think that, that, that engagement is very, very important. And so I kind of uh, embarked on this journey to, to really try to, to develop this and so obviously in sport we have this model which looks at social cohesion the better that we get along with each other which will lead to more satisfaction and ultimately better performance in sport or, or outside of sport and so for me um, we can we talked about this in our FLC meetings is that hey we, we, we want to engage students but do they really want to um, do they enroll in online classes because they want to avoid engagement with other students, which then provides us with this kind of idea is, well, it's not really a one size fits all. We shouldn't maybe just always, you know, promote engagement. But for me and my own personal teaching philosophy and the way that I've experienced education for the, you know, 80% of my life, I think it's important. And so from this came an opportunity for growth, um, in, in my opinion. So the challenge kind of led to this idea that, well, how can I engage them? But then with the challenge of time, I have to have them give a presentation, but who's actually going to watch it? Because they're behind the screen, they're probably just going to say, great presentation. So I came up with this idea, and the second piece of irony is that it's a five minute presentation, which is a challenging thing to do, because you have to practice. And so I was able to negotiate with the GC, or, um, GCCR people that um, if we, if we allow time for practice and, and, and really time to develop this, then a five and five, which is five slides, five minutes on a topic that you choose related to this course, and you can utilize the resources that we have here on campus, you're guaranteed to practice. The students are, are more likely to actually watch your presentation because they don't have to sit and watch a 10 to 15 minute presentation about you talking about something else. And so for me, it was about not just the, the opportunity for students to develop something that was important to them, but for their counterparts, for their peers, to hopefully learn something as well, because they're more likely to engage in this. And so creating some form of engagement with still meeting the requirements of a very challenging situation that I was placed in. 
And this is what I bought with the money as a computer. So I figured I'd give that credit. So <laughs> that's the end. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time. <laughs>